In this presentation, we will discuss employer responsibilities and processes related to payroll. One of the things that the employer will need to do and will need to do whether they are a corporation or a partnership or even a sole proprietor is to get an employer identification number from the IRS that done with the form SS4. So this is going to be a, just a reporting type of document that we will need to have. We'll need to use this employer identification number when we process our tax documentation. And of course, any type of a regulation body is going to know us from a number. <laughs> and in terms of processing payroll for the federal payroll, we need to have a separate number, that being the employer identification number. Now, this number is going to be important because it's 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 more standardized in terms of just employment, meaning uh, any type of, of organization can get the uh, an EIN number, even if we're a sole proprietor, a partnership, the, or a corporation. So the corporation, as we know, is a separate legal entity, and it's going to have its own its own um, corporate number when reporting income taxes. But uh, the the formats of a of a company such as a partnership typically have uh, different types of reporting requirements in terms of the number when reporting income taxes and a sole proprietor uh, possibly could be in a situation where they're uh, using a social security number so we have a different type of format for reporting on a number basis to the IRS for income taxes. So the, the employer identification number can be used then to give the IRS more of a standardized process when we're talking about payroll, no matter the type of entity that uh, we will be using. The employer identification number can also be useful for uh, sole proprietors if they want to uh, process 1099 type forms and not have to use their uh, social security number in certain types of documentation as well. So even if we don't have any employees, in essence, if we're a sole proprietor, we're kind of our own employee in some ways and we may want to have some other number representing our business other than social security number and that could be uh, these the employer identification number the process for for applying for the ss4 is fairly straightforward uh, you can do it online an online application as well or uh, go to irs.gov irs.gov and if you go to forms and go to the ss4 you'll find the application form and you can just go through the steps for the application form. It's a one page form, a pretty quick form to fill out and get going. Notice some of the key components will be the type of entity here where we have uh, the sole proprietor, the partnership, the corporation. So we have all the, all the different types of entities that we can have here applying for uh, employer identification number using the same form. So that's part of the purpose here. And then we've got uh, also the, the reason for applying uh, if, if it, is it a new business or did we have new hires possibly um, that are that are taking place meaning we're starting to have employees and therefore need an employer identification number once we have that then we're going to report that on our federal forms that being the 940 the 941 payroll processes could change and differ when we're talking about uh, large companies and small companies obviously the larger a company is the more complexities we have the more legislative requirements we typically have we oftentimes have to meet more um, uh, legal requirements and we need more internal controls to safeguard ourselves as our uh, our company grows one problem with large companies is is we obviously have more employees we have more time to track and we want to have some system that can possibly be more electronic and serve as having more accountability uh, even if we don't have the direct uh, supervision as easily to track more people so we're going to have probably some electronic type of devices to clock in and clock out within uh, larger companies, devices that uh, employees can, can use to log in and log out. Those methods are going to need some type of, of good security system, and including uh, security secure login so that uh, we, we can make sure and safeguard against uh, the proper login and login out. We can safeguard against, we, we might have some type of requirements to make sure that the person logging in is the actual individuals so other people can't log in for uh, one individual and start start their time clocks we might have some in individual identification methods we could try to limit the logins by uh, location as well so make sure that uh, it's not an online login we can try to limit the login to a specific location 
we might have the time clocks that have to be uh, punched in at you know a spe specific location. When we're talking about people in different locations, we could clearly have uh, some type of online type process as well for people to log in uh, over the web to have uh, the login access and report their time and then supervisors be able to collect that time over a web-based system. As we do that, we want to make sure we run into problems with uh, cybersecurity to make sure that all of our information is secure as we're, as we're processing the payroll information. We want to have uh, more complexity in terms of the database system to, uh, to limit the types of people that have access to, to different things to be able to separate duties uh, between individuals who are, are logging in uh, and approving time and recording time in the payroll process. Therefore, to have that separation of duties, we, we will typically have multiple types of divisions within payroll. As the payroll department gets larger, as we have different payroll, we're going to have different uh, divisions and different segmentations that you will have access to within the payroll system to allow for the separation of duty, to allow to reduce the likelihood of fraud or theft. Now, in order to deal with this type of complexity, payroll will often be outsourced. So payroll is becoming more and more something that many companies will specialize on, companies like ADP or Paychex. These are just going to be a few uh, type of companies that will specialize typically in just payroll, and they'll provide a lot of these types of resources. Now, there's a lot of pros and cons to, to outsourcing or insourcing or doing your, doing your payroll within house or outside. Uh, one of the pros of outsourcing to a third party like ADP or Paychex is that they specialize in payroll and therefore they have the, the knowledge needed in order to process payroll and typically have hopefully the ability to keep up to date with n new laws and regulations as well as dealing with places in different parts of the company, country, different parts of the world. Uh, some things we need to be careful of, of course, is that uh, because we have ADP and Paychex processing, we still need to put it into our accounting records in some way or another. And so what, and that could differ, the way we do that could differ depending on uh, what we want to set up, how, we, how we're going to set this thing up. So in some way or another, the outside individual uh, is going to have to get that information and put, we're going to have to integrate that into our system so that our financial statements represent and reflect what has been recorded uh, by payroll and paychecks. The other problem, of course, is that it is bringing in an outside source that we are becoming dependent on. We're dependent on uh, payroll and paychecks in order to process a key component rather than having the full control over that processing uh, in-house. Good job. <laughs> goodbye, dust buddies. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.